say, oh, I could never do that, meaning improvisation, on stage or off, and we're able to come back and, and say to them, well, you do that every day because your life is not scripted. You've got Louis, you've got Louis, you've got Zap, go! That you can practically use the moment you step out of the conference. Plus, amazing, like, it's a try, so, yeah. Sure, the people are just extraordinary. And There's a set of tools, a set of skills, a set of exercises that help us improve how we are connected to the world and how we can rapidly understand what's going on and what can be done about it. Beautiful! My name is Belina Rafi and I helped organize the conference. I'm on the programming committee and I'm also on the AIN board. So I was stuck in this weird place because I wanted to make Montreal work. But every time I thought about the process of what I needed to do in reality to make it work, my whole body started crunching in. And so I was in that state for about a year. And then one day in February of this year, there was this idea that bubbled up in me that was like this billboard size idea that said, I'm done here. I can go now. And instantly my chest relaxed. And I thought, okay, that's the right answer. When you say yes and to yourself, the universe floods in to help you. So that's what happened. And so I started to be open to this possibility of I'm not going to try to hang on to Montreal anymore. And all of a sudden, projects started dropping in, going east from London. And I got something in Denmark, and then I got something in Italy. And then uh, liberating uh, the festival that Cora and Zeynep were putting on, Improv Liberates, was going to happen. And all of a sudden, these things started dropping up. I'm like, I. I think I'm meant to be in the world right now. <laughs> I think I'm meant to travel around the world. I think I can do this. At the moment, I'm just in the, uh, finishing a process where I went literally around the world and I taught applied improv in 11 different countries in three and a half months. So I'm writing a book about that called Using Improv to Save the World and then in parentheses and me. It's Denmark and Italy and Greece are on the top. On the bottom there, I'm in Tehran. Talking about big fish, apparently. I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I was in Tehran, and then Singapore and Japan. So those are six of the 11 countries that I was in introducing applied improv. I think it's the best professional development for anybody who feels pulled to use this technology in service of whatever it is they do in the world. And, and I have a personal bet that I feel like it's a real love technology. There's a lot of systems breaking down. So one of the things I do is I use it in sustainability and thrivability realms of how can we really th rethink how businesses should be on the planet. And I use improv as a way to embody that, to help us connect, to help us think about things differently. There's another model that I really love. It's by a guy named Dr. Steve Behrman, and it's, it's this concentric circle one. And he talks about, so when we do somatic learning, when we do embodied learning, it's very easy to get stuck in the body emotion bit of it because we're so disconnected often from that piece of ourselves. And it's joyful to connect us with that. But often the power of our work is lost if we keep it at that pre-rational state. So if we can pull it up to mind, hmm, how can this improve what I do at work, for example, then it has a bit more traction. What I like to do is also see if we can pull it up to witness. And witness is the piece of us that knows not to believe everything you think. I was pulled to it because I needed it, actually. I thought, you know, like, those people out there needed it, but I really, um, uh, I used to work for Citibank as a project manager, and I felt like a forest fairy trapped in a machine. <laughs> and I started teaching, uh, I did a pilot in England on applied improv and business psychology, having read Robert Lowe's amazing book, improv, in, Improvisation Inc. And I thought, I'm a genius, no one else is doing this in England. And um, this guy named Neil Malarkey, I was connected with him, he's part of the comedy store Players. He said, well, you might want to speak with Paul Z. Jackson because there's a lot of us doing this. <laughs> and I did, I went to my first conference, AIN conference in Finland in 2007, and I was just totally hooked after that. And when you're traveling around and you're walking in the unknown like this, you have to go in witness. 
Because a lot of the thought patterns that you have just don't work anymore. And the other phrase, the other billboard that actually has been with me for years in this work is the how is part of the what. The how is part of the what. So if I'm going into the world to teach improv, I need to be it. I need to embody it.